Hi guys and good morning. Monday the 24th uh, of July, first trading day uh, of the week. We'll have a quick look over markets, how we're trading going into the, the first session, uh, European session of the week, and we'll have a look over the calendar uh, and what stories could drive price for the remainder uh, of the, the sessions ahead. You'll see uh, from the calendar on my right here, this was posted by, uh, by uh, Head of Analysis Anthony overnight uh, on our Twitter feed. I think Amplify retweeted it as well. So if you haven't seen this, obviously, please do uh, head over and, and it obviously helps to, to start planning the, the week as it comes. Monday is, other than really the IFO uh, out of Germany, it's going to be a pretty quiet one. Uh, it, it very much seems after uh, the, the back end of the week with the, the central banks um, you know, finishing up, that it very much seems that today is like the last race at Ascot. Uh, no one ever bets on the last race uh, at a horse meet. Everyone by then has either lost their money or won too much money and you're just basically going on a, a big gamble and, and nothing really ever makes sense. Uh, or so my racing friends tell me. Um, so today seems like one just to sit back and plan and not go chasing the market too much. Uh, if we have a look where stocks are trading after a fantastic week, uh, it has to be said, back obviously above 2900 on the, the beginning of it, yes, uh, beginning of it, uh, sort of this sort of time last week. The dovish Fed obviously helping things push on. However, we are just stalling a touch. And if we have a look, of course, on the, uh, the, the larger time frame here, well, stocks making that new all-time high is this time going to be different the you know the previous three times we've been around this level you can see we have stalled and uh, it does you know looking at this the, the recovery that we've had for the month of June uh, has been simply uh, amazing uh, to have a look at that we'll, we'll come over to the markets in terms of opportunities to get in uh, later on but it does feel like today is, is one better to, to just sit on your hands uh, and wait for the bigger things to come uh, as we go through the week with G20 uh, later and we do have uh, some important data out of uh, the US as well. Gold helped by the weaker dollar uh, and geopolitical tensions has pushed higher above 1400 uh, on the futures. Uh, we are now at 1405. Uh, we're keeping an eye on, on how we trade around that at high. Is that going to be a double top? It seems like if you want a neckline for uh, a gauge of sentiment, well, 1404.2 is as good as you're going to get. You can see we found here uh, support this morning on what was a resistance level, the failure to, to push on. Uh, we're keeping an eye on that for anyone that uh, does feel like we are a bit overdone and the dollar should start strengthening uh, or not. Uh, we'll come into that. T-notes similar to, to gold and it's been on a, a strong run as of late you can see here may and june pushing higher but are we just starting to top out uh, that will obviously will remain to be seen and oil yes another big mover in the market after finding support or you know almost getting down to 50 dollars 51 double bottom holding is a, a good level we finally then broke out this mini range that we had back on uh, the thursday decent push higher we're now back above 55 which uh, you know, here was a, uh, acting as a good resistance and now 58 trading uh, and it does look like we are looking for another push higher uh, as well. Just going back to those uh, those days to be aware of, so down at the bottom on, on Friday you've got the, the G20 summit day one with Trump to meet President Xi. That will be the, if I were to single it down to, to one thing for this week, that would be what I'd be keeping a a close eye on um, as well as obviously Saturday and over the weekend. Over the weekend, uh, over the last couple of days, well, on Friday evening, uh, I'm sure you, you all saw it, um, the, the headlines that Boris jo police have been called to, to Boris Johnson's uh, house. Uh, yes, absolutely, if you hear something, you should call the police. Um, but to then, when nothing's uh, then no further action taken to then go and send a video recording to the Guardian kind of sums up uh, what kind of person that person is. Uh, however, it's a bit of a non-event, bit of a non-story, uh, nothing coming of it. You know, Boris doesn't want to talk about his personal life. People think he has to. It's going to go around in circles. There's a lot bigger things going on. Has this affected his odds in the leadership race? No, not according to Oddschecker. Um, as low as uh, one to seven with some bookmakers 
one to five, the best you can get with Skybet. With Jeremy Hunt at, at four to one, I think that is is fair considering obviously it's a, a two horse race. Um, you know, it's the second horse pun there of the of the day. Uh, but yeah, I don't think there's there's too much in the way uh, that this is gonna to worry the market. Um, also, we've we've had over the weekend Boris Johnson talking in his his Telegraph uh, report. This was on. Uh, the weekend signaling that his focus was on leaving the EU on the 31st of October. We've heard this all before. Whether he can actually get things done or not remains to be seen. Uh, the pound recovery has, has been quite strong, back up to 128, trading below 126 just a week ago. Uh, he was suggesting in this article that the date uh, that the UK would face a democratic explosion if it did not leave by that date. Now, that's big words for something that is not a foregone conclusion. With Rory Stewart uh, getting the boot on Wednesday or Thursday last week, that was Theresa May's last backer really going of her deal. The EU have said they're not going to change the deal. Uh, and Boris Johnson is going to obviously try his own one to, to get through Parliament. That the EU would then just reject anyway. So to come out and, and say something so hawkish about leaving on the 31st of October is pretty brave. And you can picture the, the headlines come the back end uh, of that month and then on Halloween when we again have to ask for a, a further extension. He went on to say this is the t this time we're not going to bottle it, we are not going to fail. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's in my opinion and I, I think it's shared by many for us to get things done by uh, the back end of October uh, is, is wishful thinking. Uh, the back end of July, pretty much this date now, We'll know who the next Conservative leader is and the next Prime Minister. Uh, we'll obviously have the, the back end of August's recess for um, uh, for government. And then you've got the new EU Commissioner being elected before we then can get down to, to business. And there was actually a report from The Independent over the weekend uh, suggesting that the Conservative Party are reportedly making plans that would permit the next PM to hold off from putting their Brexit plans to Parliament until autumn which could limit the time to reach a deal to just over three weeks before the 31st of October. It's been three years trying to get uh, some sort of deal, but now new Prime Minister is supposed to do it in three weeks. Um, having a look at the pound, and I said it's over 1, 128, and, and really this is going to be helped by the dollar weakness that we've seen. You can see the sharp recovery, if you like, of the pound here. Uh, I do think, like we were saying uh, last Friday when we were talking about the biases for the day and the, and the week ahead, that the dollar does feel a bit overdone. Um, whether you want to, to look at this more technically to, to have your sort of gauge of sentiment, you know, you could be looking, uh, I mean, it's, it's as close as around, you guys draw this trend line on, you can see the importance uh, of the level around 127.66 pivot below that 59 if we get to get below that close the day then we could of course drift lower and that might be the way to look at things here because obviously you have the weaker dollar on one side uh, but also uh, the pound situation doesn't really look like it's going to get much better if we have a look at the the direction that we went on from may we of course are still a, a fair way off that probably worth having a look at some fibonacci levels from uh, that sell-off to that low, I mean the, the 3.82 holding quite firm. Now if we look back uh, historically as well to the February lows, the, the Valentine's Day low, there's another meaningful vote. Quite a key level that we're trading now. A bit of a rejection this morning. Has this just been the good opportunity to get short again? Uh, obviously time will re remain uh, to, to show what will happen there. Uh, but is it an important week uh, for uh, the US as well? We have some, some data out, if we just go back to that calendar, um, the, the Chicago PMI on the Friday, uh, you've also got the, the PCE number as well, which we know that the Fed look at. If that was to come in, uh, and that's really what I'll be focusing on the Friday, the core PCE uh, number, we know the Fed look at it. So if we were to get uh, a weaker reading, well, this strengthens the case for further uh, cuts, uh, and maybe it is going to be a 50% cut rather than that. That 25% cut, that, uh, or 0.25% cut that people are thinking about. However, if we were to see a good, good number, well, then they, then the market might have to change its its view, and the dollar might have to start strengthening again. Going back to the dollar, uh, and it was interesting uh, having a look at uh, the reaction uh, to the Fed. 
uh, on on Wednesday. If I just bring, well, I'll just circle up or rectangle the area. So we did push higher. We're now, I mean, if we go from the Fed, you can see, actually Friday, Thursday, you know, I've got the wrong day there. I say it wasn't a massive reaction. You can see we have pushed on quite a lot since. However, if we look right back on the, the day it was happening, and this is against the, the euro, but the dollar was on a, a two-week high. <coughs> so unbelievably, going into a, a, a dovish Fed uh, announcement, interest rate decision, we were on a two-week high of the dollar or, or just touched. So a bit of unwind off that, not necessarily to say that uh, they were ultra dovish, more so than it's, it's expected, but the, the dollar had strengthened into this meeting. So maybe just an unwind of that. I do think there's going to be a good opportunity to short, say, euro dollar again. And, and the way this market has behaved over the course of the year, it might be worth just trying to identify any potential trend lines going into to the week and breaks of those. And then you can get that continuation uh, lower. But back to uh, the, the calendar and looking at uh, opportunities for where the dollar strength could come, Friday could well be that uh, with the... Uh, the Chicago PMI uh, and the core PC numbers, which we know the the, the Fed prefer, and, and looking at as it uh, you know strips out more volatile components such as energy. Uh, analysts expecting a 1.6 reading as of now, um, and then you know some analysts have gone on to say that if they were to overshoot the forecast, it will strengthen the argument uh, of Fed Chair Jay Powell, who says weaker inflation this year is transitory. Uh, a scenario that would spur markets to rethink the case for a July rate cut. But however, on the flip side, of course, if it's worse, then it's just going to boost that idea. Which brings us on to uh, that, uh, the, the G20. And going back to, uh, well, this sort of time last week, I was speaking with, with Ant about what I would do if, if I was Trump. And having, you know, the, the tweets last week, however, uh, long ago it was where it was looking now that Trump was saying they're going to meet and it's all going to be you know great we were just saying perhaps he's just shot too early here I know it's in the, the election year and he wants the stock markets on all-time highs he wants these good trade deals but if you're China and they have been relatively hawkish on the uh, over the weekend about you know how they have the patience to, to hold off they're not going to be bullied into it you know if I was China I would I'd do the same I would make Trump sweat as long as possible. I know there's been a, a big impact on uh, the economy for, for China, um, but if they wanted to play it, it you know, from a more clever point of view, they could just hold off and then actually have the, uh, the later, latter part of the year when you know, Trump is really campaigning for that re-election. If he doesn't have uh, this China <coughs> trade deal done, he will struggle and you know, that is leverage on the other side. And, and sleepy Joe Biden might just wake up. So it'll be interesting to see what can get done at the G20. I don't think the markets are necessarily expecting uh, a deal to be announced. We have pushed higher a lot. I mean, going back to, um, you know, just the last week, just the idea that they were, were meeting was enough to, to strengthen markets massively, helped, I guess, by uh, the dovish Fed as well. Um, but, yeah, it, it should be a pretty pretty interesting end to the week so looking at that calendar you know quite a start to it more range bound let the markets tell you what's going on and uh, and the, the scheduled releases and perhaps more unscheduled announcements at the G20 might be the better opportunities for a longer lasting move uh, China what they were saying in, in the People's Daily uh, Administration the, the paper they were saying the US must drop all tariffs imposed on China if it wants to negotiate on trade and only an equal dialogue can resolve the issue and lead to a win-win. That's what the, uh, the newspaper was saying. Uh, any hint that they're prepared to get talks back on the road uh, on track towards a deal would be welcome news for the economy, the global economy, really. Uh, and then that, on the flip side, that positive news then may, you know, uh, give that warning or well, you know, take that warning away, and the Fed may not cut rates at all. So if you're Trump now, you've seen what the Fed are, are looking to do. You've seen now there's talks of a, uh, a 0.5 rate cut. Trump's going to be hawkish, isn't he? So therefore, if not, if it does look like there's a deal going to get you know get done and significant progress will be made, well then the stocks you know, stocks should uh, should continue to push on. However, I don't think he's going to do that right now. He's got a bit of ammo with the Fed, uh, and you know I, I do think you know his baby Dow Jones is. 
uh, what he cares most about in this uh, election uh, and he will time it as best as he can but it might be interesting to see how hawkish as well on the flip side China are as we go through these uh, these talks as well uh, last week obviously we saw uh, a lot of central banks with the, the Fed uh, the Bank of England Bank of Japan we saw some some comments from some ECB so we'll just have a quick run through of those things here if you flip back to, to the euro we have pushed on higher since then the uh, the interest rate decision 7 p.m. last Wednesday uh, Powell took it as close to a rate cut as possible without executing one would be the summary uh, he and the, his colleagues removed uh, a previous pledge to be patient that removal uh, was obviously ignited further dollar weakness uh, and we traded around that day 113 on the futures and we're now 114 and a half so not the biggest move in the world but still uh, a big a big reaction uh, from where we were trading uh, in that sideways range in the build up to uh, the meeting uh, un you know the uncertainty highlighted by the US trade war will uh, remain and, and Trump knows now that he can be a bit more hawkish uh, come Friday and Saturday so I would say the dollar uh, side of things it could be a good opportunity to get a reversal of that but stocks I wouldn't be too aggressive just yet about thinking uh, that this market is going to you know, push on and on and on. Uh, just be careful perhaps going into the back end of the week. And of course the, the data we talked about, the PC number, uh, if that is good, then on the flip side, power again can you know, step back and say, well, we've you know, seen this transitory uh, inflation number, as we mentioned, we're now not going to cut rates and suddenly the dollar strengthens quite a bit again and we're uh, back to those, uh, those highs on the, on the index. ECB yesterday, well, we, we know uh, uh, it was, well, was it the 18th, so Tuesday, uh, where we had the draggy tweet in the morning, or not draggy comments in the morning, only for Trump to, to come back and blast him on Twitter. The tweet here, Mario Draghi just announced more stimulus could come, which immediately dropped the euro against the dollar, making it unfairly easier for them to compete against the USA. They have been getting away with this for years along with China and others. So the ECB, while they didn't have uh, a central bank meeting, Draghi uh, found himself uh, at a Twitter Twitter war with, with Trump, not something he would have signed up for all those years ago. Of course, he's setting, stepping uh, away in autumn. Um, Bundesbank President Jens Weidmann uh, sought to make himself a more viable candidate uh, as well to succeed Draghi by acknowledging the ECB's crisis fighting tool is legal and valid. Uh, if he was to get the nod, it would be uh, a hawkish one for, for the Euro, despite him trying to make him more viable here. So we had some dubbish comments out of, uh, of the ECB, out of the Euro last week. And you can see that the day before, if I just bring this into picture here, the day before the Fed, you can see that reaction, uh, although the complete reversal and more following uh, 24 hours later uh, after that. Bank of England, uh, what did we have? Let's have a quick look over uh, at the pound. Uh, on the, the Thursday, we uh, drifted higher into the announcement, came back lower, uh, and then since uh, Friday afternoon, where we've seen a lot of dollar weakness, we have pushed on. We're just coming to that key level, though, on the pound. I'll keep an eye on that, uh, those Thursday and Friday morning uh, highs. To, to keep a, a close eye on. The Bank of England, what do they say? Acknowledging rising concerns on the UK leaving the EU, really they can't do anything until that's, uh, that is sorted, uh, especially if the, the UK leave without uh, a deal. So they've, they've kept rates on hold. However, uh, Mark, Mark Carney said they still see the need for interest rate hikes <coughs> in the coming years if their forecasts bear out. So of the, uh, the two previous dovish uh, meetings that we had from the Bank of Japan and, uh, and the Fed, the Bank of England slightly more hawkish, however, not really resembled in markets uh, as, of, as of yet. The Bank of Japan has mentioned they were dovish, but they kept things on hold, minus 0.1% uh, remaining there. Uh, Kuroda reiterated that the Bank of Japan stands ready to add stimulus and momentum towards its 2% inflation goal is threatened, so keep an eye on that inflation number for uh, the Bank of Japan. If that was to weaken, uh, you've got to imagine there's going to be a follow through and, and actually they might have to look at alternative measures. Uh, unbelievably, in uh, an era of um, monetary policy easing, 
you've got the Norges Bank who have raised rates for the third time since September and signalling more tightening to come. So fair play to, to them. Uh, that, that Scandinavian economy, which is backed by the world's biggest sovereign wealth fund, is starting to show signs of overheating after <coughs> surge in oil investment. So at least someone is, is raising rates uh, as well. Quick look over uh, the calendar again, just to reiterate, today is looking uh, pretty quiet. I wouldn't be expecting uh, too much uh, really other than uh, the, the German IFO, which will be worth keeping an eye on, uh, certainly for, for the Euro and, and the DAX alike. Uh, that's coming out in 26 minutes. Uh, the forecast uh, for that uh, IFO business climate, 97.4. So a tiny drop down from the previous reading. Um, so that will be the really the main highlight uh, today. As we go into tomorrow, uh, you've got Jerome Powell speaking again. So that will be something to keep a close eye on. Has he got any further comments to say following the uh, the dovishness of the Fed and the market reaction that that saw ahead of the G20. Does he want to say anything? That will be something I might <coughs> keep a close eye on. You've got the weekly API and DOEs in its usual Tuesday and Wednesday slot. Uh, oil has obviously pushed on quite a, a lot. We've had some relatively hawkish comments out uh, over the weekend from Iran as well. Um, let me just bring these into picture. I mean, not actually about 46 minutes ago. The Iran naval chief warns that Iran could down more drones, um, whether they would do that uh, or not. I think that would, would escalate things a bit. Trump going back on his word over the weekend, saying that he actually wasn't ready to uh, to uh, send the attack on Iran. Um, he was uh, dismissive of that, despite tweeting it 24 hours previously. Um, also, over the well, last night over the weekend, Iran Deputy Foreign Minister says its decision to decrease its commitment to a nuclear deal as a, is a national decision and irreversible as long as its demands are not met. Off this, off these comments, off the China hawkishness uh, ahead of the G20, I have to say I'm slightly surprised the uh, the U.S. markets are still near those highs. I know we're you know in a bit of a chop right now near near the the all-time high. Um, I'm yeah, a bit surprised we're not coming off a touch, but oil uh, remaining uh, around 58, pretty key to see what happens uh, at this area. It does seem like the, the R1 offered a, a good level of resistance along with this trend line. The pound is coming under a touch of pressure, and you can see actually therefore now just breaking through that level and finding support on that trend line. So this is a key zone, 72 to 77, that I'll be keeping a, a, a close eye on. Uh, gold. Uh, that neckline that we talked about, 1404, is key. Uh, we're keeping a close uh, uh, monitor on that uh, as well. Back to the calendar, just to wrap things up. Uh, you've got retail sales numbers out of Japan, so we're keeping uh, a monitor on, on how they or how Japanese data uh, comes out uh, ahead of their next meeting. Whether they're going to have to start doing things into the, the middle part of the year uh, will be quite interesting. You've got a couple of speaks, speakers as well. Uh, on the Wednesday and Thursday, Bank of England's Carney, Fed's Bullard, all speaking, and the Votney uh, on ECB. And you've got Tory leadership hustings Thursday as well. Uh, I, I think it's a pretty much foregone conclusion with Boris to, to win it. Um, time will tell if it can get more interesting. But right now, not the case. Friday, on paper, the most interesting day. G20, big US data. Um, that will be the, the main focus. Uh, and we do have some European numbers out in the morning uh, as well. I uh, hope you all have uh, a great trading day, a good week ahead, and uh, I look forward to, to catching up with all of you uh, throughout. Take care.